For those of you who have been here before might remember a couple of weeks ago I had a nightmare making one of these videos. It took me two days. Guess what? Deja vu! I'm doing it again. Ah! Anyhow, never mind that. Hey up, Mr. Josh here and welcome to video number um, five for listening and understanding. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're new here, where have you been? You should subscribe. After that, what you need to do is click on the link in the description of this video. That will take you to my website. There you can download a question sheet. At the top of the question sheet, you'll see a link to a YouTube video. Watch the video as many times as you like, answer the questions, then come back here to be told just how badly you've got it wrong. So, the video this week is Lenny Kravitz showing us around his home in Paris and all his pop culture icons. If you don't know who Lenny Kravitz is, where have you been? Have you been sleeping under a rock or something? You might know him for songs like Are You Gonna Go My Way, I Wanna Fly Away, American Woman, and lots of other things. Also possessor of an incredibly crazy haircut. But in this video, he's gonna show us around his Paris apartment. So, let's get into it. Lenny Kravitz shows us his favorite possessions. Question number one. The video opens up with Lenny explaining that he lives only part of the year in his Paris apartment. Where else does he live? Well, the rest of the time he lives in the Bahamas in an Airstream trailer. As he says, he likes the contrast of chic Paris and back to basics in the uh, Bahamas. If you don't know what an Airstream trailer is, you should look them up. They're um, sort of a cultural icon in America. And they were even used after the Apollo 11 mission as a quarantine base. And that trailer now I think is in a museum somewhere, airspace museum in America. So yeah, very famous trailers, very iconic Americana. Moving on, question number two. Lenny enjoys collecting pop culture artifacts. What field are most of the items from? Well, most of the items are from the field or genre of music. Field and genre, basically the same thing. But aside from music, he says a lot of the stuff he has is from his personal possessions of family and what have you. Question three. Lenny says that he always planned to have a special room for his collections. True or false? False. He says he never planned to have a special room for his collections. If you're new here, by the way, true false questions or very easy questions are used by me as time markers sometimes. So after the very simple true false question, there'll be a difficult question immediately after it and it's just to help you find it in the video. Or, like this one, it's a little bit of a trick question where if you're not listening properly, you immediately think, yes, that's true, or yes, that's false, when it is actually the opposite. So be warned, they're either time markers or they're a trap. Question number four. The first item we are shown from his collection is a pair of boots worn by Muhammad Ali. What are the two special features of these boots? Well, the two special features are that one, they were worn by Muhammad Ali at his last competitive fight, and two, they have his DNA on them. So maybe in the future, if some mad scientist wants to make a clone of Muhammad Ali, we know where to get the DNA from. Although it might be mixed in with a bit of cowhide. So I don't even want to think what the end result would look like. Ooh. Question number five. Lenny has a poem written by James Brown to Muhammad Ali. True or false? False. It's the other way round. Yes, really it was. Check. Question number six. Lenny makes a point of mentioning the two elephant tusks in the room. What is special about them? Well, the thing that's special about them is that they're fake. They're actually made of wood. And they were made by some artist that I tried to Google and I couldn't find. If you have better luck and can find who it is, stick it in the comments below for everyone else. Question number seven. Who owned the scuffed red boots? So the boots were owned by James Brown, who again is another legendary singer from America. If you don't know who he is, where have you been? Uh, Google it and find his music on YouTube. I guarantee you've heard it even if you don't know the name. Now, by the way, the word scuffed, you might not have heard it before or don't really know what it is. It's when two things rub against each other, okay? That leaves a scuff mark. It's not from a direct impact, right? It's two things that rub. Think of, apart from on a pair of boots or shoes, think of the bumper of a car on the corners when two cars try to park and they sort of like rub against each other. Those are scuff marks. Question number eight. What superpower does Lenny jokingly say the boots would give anyone that used them? Well, he says it would give you the ability to dance like James Brown. Personally speaking, I don't think James Brown was that good a dancer, 
and I'll probably burn in hell for all eternity for saying it, but seriously, to me it just looks like a mix between someone having an epileptic fit and electric shock treatment. But hey, that's my opinion, maybe you think different. Question number nine. On the mantelpiece, Lenny has a pair of pink, purple, high heel shoes. Who did these shoes belong to? Well, they belong to Prince, who also is a very famous American singer, who died not that long ago from an overdose of painkillers, I seem to remember, or something like that. A bit like Michael Jackson, only not quite as much. The reason I put the colour as pink or purple is that depending as to what screen you're looking at them on, they look a slightly different colour. So, whatever you think they look like, pink or purple, fine, I don't care. Question number 10. Next to the shoes on the mantelpiece, he also has a guitar and tambourine from the same person. True or false? It's true. Seriously, it's just true. You're not going to get that one wrong, come on. Question 11. In a frame, Lenny has the set list from which famous event and singer? Well, the set list is from Woodstock and it was for Jimi Hendrix. This is another one of those world famous events. It was the Woodstock of 69 when Hendrix was there and it became legendary in its own time. As Lenny says in the video, Woodstock didn't become Woodstock until after it happened. It was only after that that people thought, wow, that was one hell of an event. So, yeah. Question number 12. In another frame, there is a black jumpsuit worn by James Brown. What do the letters GFOS stand for? Well, if you got this one wrong, you really should just give it up right now. It is Godfather of Soul. The reason why I say you should give it up now is that even if you just bang GFOS into Google, it will give you the answer. You don't even need to look at the video to answer this question. So, you know, use some intelligence. Even if you didn't hear it, just Google it. Sometimes you will get the answer. Question 13. What two items of clothing does Lenny own that belong to Hendrix? So the two items that he owns, he says, are called pants and a vest. Now, as a British person, I take issue with this because as far as I'm concerned, it's trousers and a coat. But, hey, he calls it pants, whatever. For English people, pants is what you wear underneath your trousers. Underpants, you know, white fronts or boxers or whatever you want to wear. That's the difference between the English and the Americans. The Americans just don't know how to speak. Question 14. Which member of the Beatles inspired Lenny? Well, that was John Lennon. Question 15. What did Yoko Ono give to Lenny as a birthday present? Well, that would be that black sweater, jumper, shirt, whatever you want to call it, as in the frame. To me, that thing is a jumper. In America, they would call them sweaters. Why Lenny calls it a shirt, I don't know, but he does. And here's a question for you. How much stuff did John Lennon own? Because Yoko Ono forever seems to be giving away his personal possessions, either to auctions or to friends or whatever. He must have had a lot of gear, is all I can say. Question 16. What is the one item that Lenny describes as a Holy Grail item? Well, the Holy Grail item is the lyrics to Sgt Pepper, which was written by the Beatles. Again, another monumental song in history, which I don't understand. If you like it, hey-ho, I don't. If you're wondering what a Holy Grail item is, in today's culture, it's basically something that is almost impossible to find like rare cars, rare books, rare whatever. But it dates back to the Bible. If you want to find out more, just Google Holy Grail item. Question 17. What did Lenny's godmother give to him? Well, she gave him one of Miles Davis's jackets, which was good of her. Again, Miles Davis, another very famous musician. Google him, find him. Question 18. Who took the photo that Lenny has from his very first concert? Well, that photo was actually taken by his father. Although a couple of the students that I showed this to put down it was Lenny himself. No, it was his father who did it. Question 19. What NBC work item of his father does he have in his collection? Well, that will be the stopwatch. I've had an argument with a couple of my students about this who say it's the shoes. But if you actually play the video back and listen to it carefully, the item that he says was from NBC is the stopwatch. He does say that the shoes were from work, but not directly from NBC. So as far as I'm concerned, it's the stopwatch. Question 20. From what Lenny tells us, it would seem that both of his parents have died. True or false? As far as I'm concerned, this is true. I did a bit of research to try and find if his parents have died or if they're still alive, and I couldn't find an answer. So I'm just going on the fact that he says that they're not physically with him anymore and that they are there spiritually. And when you talk like that about someone, it basically means they've died. But if anyone knows whether the parents are alive or dead, Again, put it in the comments down below. Question 21. 
What was the company that made Lenny's first television also famous for making? So that would be Singer sewing machines. Basically, any junk shop in America or in England will have a Singer sewing machine for sale. They'll look rather like the one here in this picture. Question 22. Why did Lenny not go to the Alley versus Fraser fight in Madison Square Garden? Well, the reason he didn't go is he was too young, so he wasn't allowed to go. Ah, oh, shame. Question 23. His parents bought him a pair of boxing gloves from the fight that were signed by the fighters. True or false? False. This is false. Yes, they did buy him the gloves, but no, they were not signed. He later got them signed himself by sending one glove to each fighter and saying, would you please sign this for me? So the answer would be false. The devil's in the detail, as the saying goes. Question 24. Who is Lenny going to pass the collection on to? Well, Lenny says that he's going to pass it on to Zoe, and Zoe would be his daughter. And lastly, question 25. As the interview wraps up, what does Lenny say is the significance of all the items in this collection? Basically, he says that all the items are very personal to him. They all have some kind of connection to him or influenced him in some way. It's not like a lot of people who collect things just for the sake of collecting them. You know, they think, oh, I've got a lot of money, I'm going to start collecting something like Ferraris or paintings or, or whatever. All these things are special to him. It's not just a case of, I've got money, let's go buy something. Well, there we go. End of another video. I hope you enjoyed it and you got some useful information out of it. And maybe go and download Lenny Kravitz's back catalogue. Stay tuned because next week there'll be another video, which is a, a bit of a long one. It's an ex-FBI agent telling us all how to spot a liar. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget, before you leave, you need to subscribe, thingy over here, and maybe watch a playlist or two over here, and come back next week for more videos. Ciao for now.